When it comes to implementing data validations, Ruby gives a number of ways to accomplish this goal. So for example, let's say that we have a couple of arrays like we have right here. We have array one and array two. So right here, what we wanna do is check to see if all of the words match and if they are at least four characters long. So you can see that as an element, we have one that is five characters, four, 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 and then requirements, which is plenty of characters. Then in array two, we have an array that has a few items like are, not, all and four that are not four characters long. So this is an arbitrary type of value, but this is something that you're gonna discover you will need to be able to implement at some time or another. So how exactly can we do this? Well, there are a number of ways. I guess technically we could iterate over every element in the array and just check to see if those items are over four characters or if they're not and we could return false if they're not if it finds any characters that are under four but there's a little bit more of a functional way to do this in ruby and that's what i want to go through today so as you can see, because the method that we're gonna create, which is called at least four characters with a question mark, because we can call it on an array, that means that we need the ability to open up the array class and then we're gonna add to it. So this is gonna be at least four characters with a question mark. And if you have not really seen the syntax, whenever you add a question mark to the end of a method in Ruby, it's an idiomatic way of saying that this method should return a true or a false. So for example, because we have a question mark here, if we iterate over these items, we should not return the character or the, the word that is less than four characters. It should simply return a true or a false value. And that's something that anytime that you see a question mark at the end of a method in Ruby, it's a pretty good sign that that is only going to return or a true or false, which is a really nice thing whenever you're reading methods. So how are we going to do this? Like I said, we don't want to just do an each operator and then check and perform some break statements and add conditionals. That would work, but there's a very helpful little method here called all that we can call on the array. And what all does is it allows us to pass in a conditional. So it's gonna look at each element. So this uh, all takes a block and it is going to look at each element and this is where we can run our conditional. So here I can say e.length and then for length here, assuming I spell it correctly, I can check to see if it is greater than or equal to four. And if it is, it's gonna return true. And if it finds any elements that are less than four, then it's gonna return false. And this does not return true or false for all the items. It simply return, it gives one true or one false value. So what you can read this as is, are all of the characters at least, or all the words or the elements, are they at least four characters long? If so, this is true. If not, it's gonna be false. So let's come down here. I'm gonna copy both of these items and coming down to the end, let's come and give a test. So we're going to test to see if these items are, uh, if they match the validation or not. So I'm gonna say array one, at least four characters, and then let's do the same thing for array two. Now, as you can see in our test, the first item should be true, second one should be false. So if I run this code right here, we'll see if our implementation works, and it does. So you can see that right here, this array has all characters that are at least, or all elements are at least four characters long or more, and for this one, it found some that weren't. So it came through, and if you wanna test it out, you can even see that the return value is true or false, which you can see we have two items here, true or false, but above that, it had to run the conditional on each one. 
So it found true, true, true. It found that for each one, the words. And then as soon as it found false, it stopped looking. And that's one other very important thing to know about what the all method does. As soon as it finds a single false value, that tells it that it's going to return false. It doesn't matter if there are if there's only one item that doesn't match the validation or if there are a million for performance reasons. As soon as it finds that false value, it simply quits out of the program. So that is something that is helpful to know. So let me save this code and let's run the test. This is for February 25th. If I run this, we can see we have one example, zero failures. So this validation now works and we can call it on any array where we want to confirm that all of the elements are four characters or longer.